What's cracking guys, Christian Electrician here. Today, we're gonna be installing a receptacle, a switch, and a light, all on the same circuit. And we got our temporary wall right here. We got our boxes all mounted. That's these guys right here. And what you're gonna wanna do is with the drywall, see these little plastic deals? This is set up for a half inch. So you butt that up against the wood, which I'll show you right now. You're gonna line the wood up to these notches, just like so. Boom, it'll stop it right there. That way you have your half inch for your drywall. After you have your box set right there, you're gonna go ahead and nail in both sides just like so. That's for our switch. That's for our receptacle. So when it comes to determining the height for your switches and your receptacles, basically, if it's a non-ADA, you're gonna put your switch to about 48 inches to the top. And then for your receptacles, you're gonna go about 20 inches to the top of the box um, above finished floor. So that's what these are marked out and installed as. If it's ADA, which is, you know, you need a accessibility for people, you know, say if you're in a wheelchair, you're gonna have your box down to about 40 inches. Alrighty guys, so what we have here is 12-2 non-metallic sheathing cable. And this is Romex. This is what people call Romex. And it's basically stuff you use when you're wiring a house. So for residential purposes. When it comes to 12 gauge wire, you're gonna put these on a 20 amp circuit. And that's what we have our switches and our receptacle rated for. This is dual rated, 15 and 20 amp switch. And this is a 20 amp receptacle. In the National Electric Code Book, we have some general requirements for receptacles. And in chapter two, wiring and protection, we have this table 210.24. Summary of branch circuit requirements. Under 20 amp, we have minimum size circuit wires is 12 gauge. So you can look at the NEC and browse to that for always helpful code compliant information. If you wanna get real technical, you can go to the conductors in the subject index in the back and look under conductors until you find non-metallic sheathing cable. Once you find your NM cable, which is non-metallic sheath cable, it tells you to see non-metallic sheath cable. Once you find non-metallic sheath cable, you're gonna wanna look up installation. So here we go, installation 334-2. So we turn to article 334, non-metallic sheath cable types NM and NMC. Part two is right here, installation. Use is permitted 334.10. We'll tell you all the places that it's permitted. Here under installation, we find 334.30 securing and supporting, which it can be supported by staples and listed cable ties, identified for securement and support or straps, hangers, or similar fittings designed and installed so as not to damage the cable at intervals not exceeding four and a half feet and within 12 inches of every enclosure. So let's stick our cable in. Take it up. In chapter three, wiring methods and materials. If you're drilling through studs and you're boring holes, there's a requirement that you at least be in one inch, an inch and a quarter from the nearest edge of the wood member. So for good practicality, we're gonna put this guy in the center and keep our inch and a quarter clearance from the edge. Then you get your NM cable staples, and then you put your staples in. Be careful not to hammer it too hard to where you pinch the Romex and cause your copper to break or cause a short. So the minimum is 12 inches within the box and I went six inches. The code is the minimum. You could always go above and beyond and do more. So in this case, I added a staple here and a staple here. Make sure when you're putting your Romex, you're not putting it this way. You're laying it flat, flat running parallel with the wood. Okay, so not long ways this way. Make sure it's nice and flat and you'll be just fine. Now that we have all of our wire ran and stapled per NEC code, now it's time to start making up our boxes. Under article 314.17, conductors entering boxes, conduit bodies, or fittings, conductors entering, conductors entering through cable clamps. This is point number two under section 314.17. Cable assemblies with non-metallic sheaths are used. The sheath shall extend not less than a quarter inch inside the box. 
So the bare minimum for this sheath is at least a quarter inch inside pass, passing through the clamp. So as we can see on the receptacle, we're gonna have our ground on the left, our neutral on the left, and our hot on the right. So if you're gonna be making a bunch of these boxes, you gotta be ready to move your wires around so when you come back later and install this after the drywall, then your wires will be ready to rock and roll. When you're cutting your Romex, make sure you have the wire strippers that are Romex rated so you can cut them easily. If you have to use a razor blade, make sure you go real light. And when you're penetrating this um, non-metallic sheathing cable, you really take your time and just go very delicate. And you could pull on the sheath while you're cutting and it'll kind of just give it a couple little cuts and then pull, pull it off. Be very delicate, do not rush this step. So we separate our hot over here. And first we start with our ground. Push that back to the back of the box, give it a little bend. Your ground. Then you push your neutral back on the left side. And you're making a little spring, like a little accordion. You're gonna push that to the back of your box. Also, you do the same with your hot. So now we're just prepping it to come back and tie it all together after the drywall is installed. For our switch, we're gonna go ahead and remove the sheath. So after you've safely removed the sheathing, we're now gonna do the same thing for the switch. Ground's on the left. So we push down, push down. For the back of the box, then you go up. And we're gonna, we're gonna cut it right here. So we'll cut. We're gonna use the longer piece and that's gonna be our pigtail. So you put all three together, make sure they're all even, give it a couple twists. And the more that you do this, the faster you'll get. Get your wire nut, stick that on there. Push it back in the box. Now you have your pigtail for your receptacle, or for your switch. Up next is the neutrals. These ones, you're just gonna wire nut together. So once again, push it to the back, come up right there to the top, cut your wires. 12 gauge, you're gonna use the 12. Because it is solid, you're gonna use the 12 off this side and not the STRD, which is stranded. So you're gonna go to the 12 here. Same thing, tap them together. Give them a couple twists. Now you, the wire nuts will twist them together, but I learned mine old school, so I just do it and it keeps it super secure. Put your wire nut on and a switch. You don't use the neutrals, they just tie together. So you got your ant, you're coming in and you're going out. So you just tie this together. Stick it in the back of the box and forget about it. Make sure you push it back, leave room for your, for your switches. So you're gonna have your ground. That's what you're gonna use. And then here, on the bottom of the box, we have these two hots we're not gonna tie in. On your switch, you have your ground, which is gonna be on your left side. So we got our ground station for that. And then on the right side, we have our hot coming in and we have our switch leg going out. So this guy on the bottom is our power. So he is gonna go here and this guy is gonna be our switch leg going out. That's this wire going up top. Power coming in down here, switch leg up here. Don't get those confused. So on the far right is where we're gonna put the, the power and then the switch leg going out. So this guy's bringing in the 120 and this guy's carrying, this, this one's not live until you turn it on. When you turn it on, carries power up through there. So we're gonna just push those back in the box, just like so. You want your wires out of the way because the drywallers are gonna come, put the drywall up and they're gonna cut out these boxes and they can cut your wires, okay? So you wanna push it back. 
and then we go ahead and do the same thing for our light box up top. All right, so now all we need is drywall. Let's go ahead and get that up there. Now we got the drywall on, so we're ready to go. Alrighty, now we go back to our receptacle, get our ground out, get our neutral, and our hot. So you only need about six inches coming out of the box. That should be plenty, so we're gonna get rid of a little bit. We're gonna give this guy a little curly cue. That's what you use the little hole right here for. And whenever you wire a receptacle you, or any electrical device, you start with the ground, then you go to the neutral, which is the white wire, and you do your hot last. Put your hook facing clockwise, so when you tighten, like so, it goes in the direction of you tightening. After you cut and remove, you do the same for the neutral, and get ready for your hook to go on. A good way to remember is this, the longer side, gets the white side and also the screws are silver. Always remember that. So let's put our wire on. So now it's, gonna, it's in the direction of clockwise. We're gonna screw that down. All right, that's nice and on there good. Now let's do the hot. All right, now that we got our hot, put our screws in. You just screw in these two, the bottom and the top screw, make sure it's nice and flush and that it's not going anywhere. Next, we're gonna put our plate on. Now, how to tell an electrician from a handyman is an electrician will always make their screws go up and down. If you see a plate installed like this, you know a handyman did it. Real electricians always line it up like that. Just, just so you know. Up next, we got our switch. Let's go ahead and pull out our ground. Our neutral stays in the back because it's just neutral is coming in. A switch doesn't use a neutral, it just uses a hot leg and the switch leg. Now that our wires are ready, we're gonna go ahead and put them on. The ground goes here, the hot goes here, and up here, we're gonna put the switch leg. Switch leg, hot leg, ground. For the hots, this has clips, so we don't even need these. So I'm gonna restrip these and put them in straight. The receptacle was also like that too, so I went ahead and removed these. If it doesn't have this, and it's just like this, like the ground, hook it. All right, keep that in mind. All right, so we got our ground on. Now we're sticking in the load, the switch leg. Get a little more of that in there. You just take your time with this stuff. So we got that all the way in. Tighten that down. And we still wanna use the same principles. Now we're working our way backwards because we put the hot in last. So that's our hot coming from the bottom. So we're gonna put this in. So when we tighten it clockwise, it's gonna suck it in just like we did with the hooks. Let's put it in the bottom. And after every time you install it, give it a tug test. Tug test, good. Alrighty, now we're gonna get our cover plate on. And just like we did before, line your screws straight up and down. Now let's do the light. Okay guys, so I had to swap out that box for our, our wall light with a circular box. I had one in the bag, but I accidentally put in the wrong one. So the light's all good and ready to go. We just had to swatch, uh, swap out a box. And then receptacle's good, switch is good, light's good. Let's see this thing in action. And just like that, it's all done.